the Bible, the ultimate moral guide, the perfect inerrant word of God, the best source for all knowledge ever presented to the human race, the basic instructions before leaving Earth. Ever read it? Neither of most people, including the ones who claim to take it literally. If they had, there would be a lot more atheists. Don't believe me? Well then, grab the old King James, follow along as I take you through the sometimes humorous, often horrifying, and always logic-defying verses that will leave you saying, That's in the Bible? Welcome to another episode of That's in the Bible. I do apologize for the longer than usual break between episodes, but I should be back on track now. In this episode, we will be examining Yahweh's unhealthy infatuation with male genitalia. More specifically, his expectation that we alter his supposedly perfect design. Think about it. God's supposedly infallible, yet as a sign of some covenant, we are supposed to change something he designed. So, God's design for the phallus wasn't infallible, was it? Now, when I say infatuation, I'm not exaggerating. Yahweh is supposed to be the most good moral being in existence, but a quick search shows us that when it comes to his moral concerns, there's no contest. One of the most horrible crimes by modern standards, murder, gets mentioned 43 times in the Bible. Compare that to circumcision, which gets mentioned a whopping 376 times. No, wait, that's all wrong. Lose the tip. There we go. 376 times. Just so we have a little perspective on how ridiculous this is, let's take a word that has no connection to morality at all and see how frequently it gets mentioned. Goats. Goats appear more frequently in God's perfect inspired word than murder. Still not as much as circumcision, though. With so many examples to choose from, it's hard to pick a single story to focus on for this episode. The Thinking Atheist has already covered one of those stories in a hilarious video entitled Foreskin Follies, and that's linked in the description. For this video, I've chosen to focus on the story found in Genesis chapter 34 verses 1 to 29. Here we find Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, has been raped by Shechem, son of Hamor the Hivite. After raping her, he supposedly fell in love with her, so his father went to Jacob and his house to try to negotiate a wedding. This would include the essential assimilation of Jacob's tribe into the Hivites. Shechem even says to Dinah's many brothers that he is willing to do or give anything to be able to take her as his wife. I would do anything for love. The sons tell Shechem and his father that since they have a covenant with God, they couldn't possibly allow their women to marry men that remained uncircumcised. No, I won't do that. They said, however, if all of their men would undergo circumcision immediately, they would gladly accept the terms of their proposal. They returned to their city and did as they had been asked to do. On the third day of their recovery, when all the men were still sore from having their foreskin forcibly removed with a sharp rock, Two of the sons, Simeon and Levi, took swords and murdered all of the men in the city. All for one man's crime. They killed every male, destroyed property, stole their animals, their money, and their women. Despite the fact that this story reads like a particularly dirty sketch from Monty Python, this is actually how it's presented in scripture. I don't really have to add anything to it. Much like the majority of the Bible, when the flowery language is removed, it's able to be seen for the absolutely ridiculous nonsense that it is. As an aside note, while it is fun to laugh at ridiculous stories such as this, there is a darker side to the concept of circumcision. Many of the more fundamentalist Jewish sects still practice traditional circumcision, which includes the moil using his mouth to suck the foreskin off of the infant. Any person of sound mind would naturally be repulsed by this concept, but it's made even worse when you consider the fact that there have been multiple occasions where the infants have contracted STDs such as herpes from the person performing the ceremony. Unfortunately, the practice is protected from the law due to religious freedom. It's things like that that are the reason I make these videos. We can laugh. We can ridicule. 
but let's not forget that these laughable ideas cause harm in the real world.